At times, I forget how much I enjoy nothing. And by nothing, I don't mean putting on a mindless TV show or watching my favorite YouTuber. I don't mean using technology as an escape or activities as a distraction. I mean the exact opposite. I mean going for a walk without headphones in, or driving in the car without the radio on, or sitting on a bench at a park in silence, or standing in my living room, leaning against the wall, looking out the window. I mean excluding myself from all external stimuli to pay attention to the thoughts running through my head, to spend time examining the feelings I'm having and stories I'm telling myself, to enjoy the slow rush of peacefulness that floods over my mind. It's weird to explain, but in these moments, there's this calmness I experience that I can only describe as serenity. It's an untroubled, unstressed, unworried state. It's a feeling of gratefulness and optimism. Gratefulness for the family that raised me. Gratefulness for the position I'm in. Gratefulness for the opportunity to experience this peace. And optimism that there's still so much more left in life. But it's this calmness, this peacefulness, this serenity, that can be increasingly hard to find in the world today. And I think it's one of the most important concepts worth fostering and protecting. So I wanna talk about the relationship we have with ourself. No matter who comes and goes throughout life, what jobs we have or lose throughout our career, and what feelings and experiences we have throughout time, there's really only one person who's there through it all. One person who truly shapes our perspective, who determines our mood, who guides our attitude, and really determines our overall happiness. And that's ourself. We will always have ourself throughout life. And the relationship we have with ourself is the most important relationship. If you were to sit alone in a room for five minutes, what runs through your head? What about after 10 minutes? How busy are your thoughts? How much are you comparing yourself to others? How much are you judging yourself? What about after 30 minutes? Are you enjoying this time? Do you like your inner dialogue? How would you describe the story in your head? In Ryan Holiday's book, Stillness, he writes, we limit our inputs and turn down the volume so that we can access a deeper awareness of what's going on around us. In shutting up, we can finally hear what the world has been trying to tell us or what we've been trying to tell ourselves. If we provide ourselves with the opportunity to perform self-observation, then we can become more self-aware. We can gain a deeper understanding of ourself. And if we find that we're unhappy or judgmental or pessimistic, if we find that we're not at peace with ourselves, if we find that we can't sit still and enjoy the peace and calmness in our own head, how can we ever experience lifelong happiness? And in Anthony DeMello's book, Awareness, he writes, we always want someone else to change so that we will feel good. But has it ever struck you that even if your wife changes or your husband changes, what does that do to you? You're just as vulnerable as before. You're just as idiotic as before. You're just as asleep as before. You are the one who needs to change, who needs to take the medicine. Now, I'm not a psychologist or a Buddhist or a professional with any expert knowledge, so really I have no clue what I'm talking about, but I thought I would share some of the methods I've found helpful for providing myself with space to think, some methods I've found helpful in becoming more self-aware, and some methods I've found helpful in gaining a more positive and optimistic and calm mindset. So let's start with minimalism. Minimalism has played a key role in my life simply by providing me with more time. By limiting my physical possessions, there's just less things that can break, there's less things that need to be fixed, there's less things that need to be cleaned, there's less things to just worry and stress about. And all of that just provides me with more time throughout the day. And by limiting my digital consumption or screen time, there's just less interruptions. There's less time wasted on social media, and there's less time spent on TV shows or Netflix. And all of that leads to more time too. And by limiting my daily decisions, my time spent is just more productive. I'm not trying to figure out what I want for breakfast every day, or what I'm going to wear to work every day, or what kind of workout I want to perform every day. By predetermining most of my daily habits, my time spent is just a lot more productive, and that creates a lot more time too. So simply by limiting my physical possessions, my digital consumption, and my daily decisions, I'm able to create a lot more time and peace throughout my day. And I should add that minimalism has helped me reevaluate my value system too. It's taught me that relationships, mental and physical health, education, freedom, 
self-awareness are a lot more important to me and are really determining factors to my happiness more than the car I drive or the likes I get on social media from posting a cool picture. And I think that's been a valuable lesson too. Meditation. I found meditation to be helpful too, but not in the stereotypical fashion. I don't sit on the floor with my legs crossed, hands cupped, gazing off into the horizon at the sunset, waiting for spirituality to rush over my soul and enlighten me. No, it's nothing really like that at all. Like I mentioned, physically, it may just be taking a solo hike or sitting at a park bench by myself. And then mentally, it can be one of two things. One, it may be that I'm focused on quieting my mind, letting thoughts come, but really focusing on letting the thoughts go and just focusing my attention on nothing, just trying to enjoy the thoughtlessness and peace of my own head. And two, it may just be that I'm focused on awareness. I'm trying to figure out what sort of thoughts are running through my head, what sort of emotions am I experiencing, and what sort of stories am I telling myself. Just trying to get a better understanding of who I am and what I'm experiencing. But meditation has been a great tool for helping me increase my self-awareness simply by performing self-observation. And if there's any recurring negative thoughts or feelings that I find throughout this process, I look to change them. I think most people don't realize how flexible our mind is. Although it's not a muscle, it sure acts like one. And when we place demands on the brain, it evolves to meet them. And so I think it's entirely possible to start liking things that we previously didn't like, to start seeing the positive and things that we always saw the negative in before, and to really start shaping our thoughts into however we feel serves us best. And so here are a few of the things I've done to help out with this process. One, practicing gratitude. Write down three things each day that you're grateful for. There's a lot to be grateful for that we commonly overlook and don't appreciate. So for example, at work, if a lot of issues come up all at once, I can easily be stressed out, but at the same time, I can be grateful for the job I have and that people are coming to me to help solve their issues. So in this example, I've found ways to enjoy things that would have stressed me out previously. Two, performing visualization. Visualize whatever it is that you want and start to think about what it would be like if you had it and if it's even worth desiring. For example, if I find myself desiring a luxury house, then I start picturing exactly what it's like if I had it. And so what I start to realize is that I'd probably be sitting on the same couch with the same laptop, writing a very similar blog post. And this starts to help me realize that these desires we have usually come from external conditioning and not from our internal needs for happiness. Three, stop complaining. Try to go an entire day without complaining. Don't complain about the traffic or the weather or the news or your boss. Just try going an entire day without complaining about anything. In doing this, it's helped me realize how much we blame our suffering on other people or on situations that we just don't have a lot of control over. And if we don't have control over a situation, in most cases, it's not even worth worrying about. And if we do have control over the situation, it's much more effective to figure out how to resolve the issue than to just sit there and complain about it. So here are my final thoughts. I'm not sure this video flowed nicely from start to finish with actionable steps along the way to accomplish what I'm talking about in regards to creating a peaceful and positive mindset, but I'm not sure there is a step-by-step -step guide to accomplish exactly what I'm talking about. I think everyone is so uniquely different in their thoughts and their beliefs and their attitudes that there's not one process or one method that's gonna work for every person. And so I hope you found it helpful to see some of the things that have worked for me. It's been using minimalism to reclaim my time and reevaluate my value system. It's been using meditation to quiet my mind and gain a better understanding of myself. And it's been using tools like visualization or gratitude or no complaint challenges to retrain my perspective. And all of this has allowed me to create a better relationship with myself, a relationship that's both healthy and happy. And so I challenge you to close your device once this video finishes and take a few minutes to evaluate your thoughts. What's the story in your head? Thanks for watching to the end of the video. If you like this video, please let me know by enabling the like button. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. And if you wanna see more videos like this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Lastly, if you're looking to take the next step in your journey to health and happiness, check out My Health Sciences Plus. My Health Sciences Plus has all the exercises, exercise plans, recipes, and meal plans that I've used to get and stay in the best shape of my life. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you guys next week.